Hey, this is Brian Boydston. In this screencast, I'm going to be showing you an app called Nearpod. Now, Nearpod runs on any computer. I'm running it right now on a MacBook Pro. Um, it also has an app that works with an iPad, and so I use it in correlation with an iPad in my classroom. Uh, now, Nearpod has some features. It basically allows you to produce slides. Um, you can put content on those slides, a lot like a PowerPoint slide or a Keynote slide. It also allows you to put interactive elements. I want to show you how I use it in correlation with a, a screencast, which is how I do my primary teaching, a lot like I'm doing this screencast here. Um, how I use that in correlation with that to create a kind of a collaborative element uh, where students can collaborate in class as well as an assessment piece to see did they learn what I was wanting them to learn out of that lesson. And so really I use it as a student response type thing. So let's take a look at Nearpod. Um, the first thing is obviously it's really simple. Um, if, you wanna, if you wanna create a Nearpod session, you simply hit create. Um, now when you go to the create, um, you just hit add and then you have a choice here. You can either start from scratch like you see here in the bottom left or you can open up a file you already have. Now the types of files you might want to open up is if you already have a keynote, you could take that keynote, save it as a PDF, so each slide is a PDF file, upload it in here, it will make each one of those uh, PDF pages or slides of your keynote into an actual uh, Nearpod session slide. And so you can send those to the students. And so it operates a lot like that. You can also upload your PowerPoints in there as well. I usually like to start from scratch since I'm just using this as a response app. So I wanna create some questions, five, six questions that I'll send to the students and I can get responses back from, or, uh, back from them. And so um, the first thing here is you'll notice um, it gives you a beginning slide and an ending slide. To add content, you just hit the add button. Now as far as the content, you can add videos onto a slide that you could just push a video out to all the students' iPads. Um, you can add content like you see here in the middle as far as web content. We could put in a web address and that would allow for us to push a, a website to their, to their iPads. And so now they can navigate within that website, keeps them focused. Um, what I'm going to use here is this add an activity. And again, I'm just using this as a response app. And so I can add open-ended questions, polls, quizzes. A quiz would be like a multiple choice question. Um, I can even add a picture on that multiple choice question. The students can select. I'll show you some examples here in a minute. Um, and then the draw it. I love the draw it. I can add an image, ask them a question, and then they can annotate over that image. And then again, that's going to submit it, their answers right back to my screen. So a really cool feature to be able to see, do the kids grasp what we're wanting them to grasp. And so let's take a look at a few. The first thing we're going to click here is engage. And I have an iPad up and running right now with the, with the app. And so um, we can kind of toggle back and forth and, and see that as we go. All right, there we go. It took this second. All right, now once it comes up, uh, any that you've published, you notice I don't have a whole lot here. I'm operating on the free version in Nearpod. If you have the paid version, you have unlimited space. Uh, I don't have that. And so I'm going to click live session here for this one on mutations. I'm going to say no, we don't want to continue our last one. And it's going to give me a code here. And I want to show you real quick what it looks like on the iPad. On the right of my screen as we go through this, you'll see my iPad, which I have right in front of me. On the left side of the screen, you're going to be seeing what I see on my MacBook Pro. And so you can see that on the right there, we have a little place where we can enter a pin. So I'm going to go ahead and join this session. Our code there is over there on the left. It's XB. HDR. All right. So we're going to join that sec, this section, this Nearpod session. And if we click on here, I want to, I want to show you. Let me get rid of this. All right. If you'll notice, what I see on the left on my MacBook Pro is identical to what the students see. So I control the content that's being pushed to their to their iPad at any given time, which makes it nice because it keeps me keeps them focused. Uh, with what I want them to see. And so a couple examples. So the first thing um, is it's always going to ask for the student's name, which is good, so I know who's, who the responses are coming from. So let me go ahead and type in my name there. All right. We'll hit submit. And you'll notice, I mean, you see how responsive it is. It just popped up. This is on my MacBook here. And so instantly, the response is really, really good. I've used Socrative, which is another type of response app. Not as responsive as this one. This one's been really, really good. Um, so let me show you a few examples. Um, the first example here, this would be an open-ended question. You can see here on the right what it looks like on the iPad. Um, I'll just type in my answer. I'm just going to put demo since this is our little uh, demo here. And I'm going to hit submit. It says thank you to me. 
let's click back over here so we can see and you can see the answer popped up now if I had 30 students on there which sometimes I do sometimes I just have 15 because I usually have the students in groups of two collaborating to come up with these answers and so uh, you can see the answers as they pop up one real cool feature I want to show you here is on the right you have share and what share does is allow me if I really liked that answer and I wanted all the students to see that answer from that student I can hit share and I want you to see here on the right, it automatically shares that answer with the whole class. And so now every student's iPad in the whole class is showing up with that same answer. And now we can talk about that. And so a real cool way to kind of share work between students and uh, make it a little more interactive for them. Uh, the next thing, let me go here. Let me unshare that. Let's go to another, another look. This would be an example of a multiple choice question, how that would look on here. And if we come here, you can see I'm ready to take the quiz. I'm going to answer the first one correct. Let's get the second one wrong. All right. Hit thank you and uh, pop over here. My answer should pop up shortly. And you'll notice there the first one was correct. It's in green. The second one was wrong. It's in red. And so I can see that. And so if you look over here on the left, obviously there's a 50% correct. And so the score on this one student was 50%. Now, if you have a whole class, it's really good because you're going to see a percentage. And so obviously, you'd like to see somewhere around an 80% where students are getting the content. Now, if something scores really, really low, then it's a great opportunity. You've just introduced the material to them. They're now collaborating and coming up with answers here on this Nearpod session. Now you can correct them before they ever leave for the day. So a really good opportunity to do that. And the more students you have, the more this thing will look like a better graph. One student on here doesn't do a great job doing that. But if you get multiple students, this graph will really show you where you're at with the greens being the, the predominant thing that you're going to see. The next slide, let me pull, I'm going to go ahead and skip to one that allows you to draw. And I want you to see what it looks like here on my iPad. Um, this is an image of a karyotype that I threw on, a, obviously, a science question. And you can see there it says, draw, it says, uh, let's see, draw what a Down syndrome person's karyotype would look like. So obviously, this is a normal karyotype. I was wanting the students to draw. And you can see in the bottom left, they have a couple uh, tools that they can have. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to answer this one. And I'll go ahead and circle where my answer was so you can see it. Um, a person with Down syndrome has an extra chromosome 21. And so it allows the students to annotate and write on that, hit send. And then let me show you what, that, what that's going to look like on, on my screen. And if you come here, you'll see on, on my screen it shows up. That was submitted to me. You can see how fast even the images submit. If I had 30-some students, then you'd see all kinds of answers all along this. You can even click on them to see that answer up close. And then again, if you want to share it, you can share it out to every student. That way you can have a class discussion about what maybe what one of the students came up with an answer. So again, just a really good way to get students to collaborate. I use it as a way for them to collaborate and a way for them to share responses back to me. And I don't let them use notes to do it. I want to see, did they learn from that screencast, that material that was presented to them? Did they learn the key concepts I wanted them to learn? Because the next few days after this, we're going to be doing labs, activities, all to reinforce the things we learned in this screencast and this Nearpod session.